Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is transient analysis. We'll solve few numericals related to transient analysis. It is the next part of initial conditions for the subject electrical circuits for second year ENTC students. If you haven't yet watched earlier video of initial conditions, do watch it. I will provide the link in the description box. So let us start the session. The problem is in the following network, steady state is reached with switch K open. This sentence is important. It is mentioned that steady state is reached when switch K is open. At T is equals to zero, switch is closed. Find I of T. In all numericals, first step is we need to calculate what will be the initial current. That is what will be the initial uh, conditions. Now to calculate the initial current, we need to refer this sentence steady state is reached and under steady state inductor acts as short circuit. The switch K is open. So I will remove this branch because it is open circuited. I have removed this branch and just now I told you under steady state inductor acts as short circuit. So I will remove this inductor and short circuit means directly I need to draw one line. Now our aim is to calculate the current I. This current is initial current which is denoted by I0. In the present case the calculations are pretty simple. These are two voltage sources 20 volt and 10 volt connected one after other. So they are in series. So total voltage becomes 20 plus 10 that is 30 total resistors. Again these two resistors are in same wire. They are in series. So it is 30 plus 20 that is 50. So I will be using simple Ohm's law. Basic formula is I is V upon R. Total available voltage is 20 volt plus 10 volt that is 30 volt divided by available resistance. These two resistors are in series. So it is 50. So it is 3 by 5 that is the value of initial current and since it is current it is denoted by I therefore I will say I0 that is initial current is 3 by 5 so its value will be 0.6 amperes this is the calculation of initial current now in the next step this was the step 1 we calculated initial current in the next step we have to consider the condition T is equals to 0 so let us uh, solve the numerical for the condition t is equals to 0. At t is equals to 0, switch is closed. So I am referring to original diagram. Switch is closed. So I will show it like this. This is directly connected because switch is closed. We have to calculate current I of t. We need uh, to make use of these two formulae, mathematical formulae. I will explain you while solving the numerical how to make use of this formulae. Now since the switch is closed, the line is like this. Now refer the recall the basic concept. This is a short circuit line. To this short circuit line, 20 volt and 30 ohm they are in parallel because as if there are two lines, one line contain 30 ohm and 20 volt, and another line is short circuited. Do remember the very very basic concept. If there is short circuit in parallel with anything, any component that component will get vanished. So this particular branch, since it is in parallel with the short circuit branch, I'm talking about this branch. This is now acting as a short circuit. So this branch gets vanished. That means it should not be considered for the calculation. This is called as a redundant branch. So I need to remove it. So first step, I will remove it applying the basic concept because there was a short circuit in parallel with the branch. Now, this is the remaining diagram. I have to do the calculation because I, I, I already I have shown the switch is closed. Now, let us say this current is I of T as if it is given in the question itself. So, very simple logic. 10 volt is the applied voltage. There are two components. One is resistor, another is inductor. So, available voltage 10 volts gets uh, developed. I mean, the there will be voltage drop of 10 volt across 20 ohm and across one half henry's now to calculate the voltage drop across uh, resistance we need to use the ohm's law that is vr voltage drop across resistor is current into resistor whereas this is the inductor to calculate the voltage drop across inductor the formula is l di by dt l is the value of inductance d by dt of i derivative of i 
So what I said, 10 voltage available, supply voltage, this voltage gets dropped across 20 ohm and one half Henry. So simply I will write 10 volt is equals to voltage drop across 20 is I into R, I is I of T, R is 20. So it is 20 I of T plus Voltage drop across inductor is given by L di by dt. L is the value of inductance which is one half Henry's that means 0.5. So I will write it one half or 0.5 anything will do. It is one half that is L d by dt of i. In this case i means i of t or simply I will write it over here d i of t by dt. So it is d by dt of i of t. This is the equation. Now we need to simplify the equation. Do remember the basic things. Simplify means at one side I should get the terms related to I of t, at another side I should write the constant terms. So let us first rearrange the equation. I will write it like this 1 half di of t by dt plus 20 i of t is equals to 10. Now always remember the coefficient of d by dt term must be 1 to make the thing simple. So to make this coefficient 1 I will multiply both sides by 2. So multiply both sides by 2. So this gets vanished. So it becomes d i of t by d t plus 4 0 i of t is equals to 20. Say this is equation 1. Now what do you have to do? To solve such equations, we need to make use of the mathematical identity. This is the mathematical identity. If equation is d by dt of i of t plus p i of t, p is some coefficient, is equals to q, then its solution is given by this equation. This is the direct formula. e raised to pt in the bracket q e raised to plus pt dt. This is integration plus c1 e raised to minus pt. So, if I want to make use of this formula, first thing, I have the availability of equation 1. Compare equation 1 with the formula, with this formula. If you compare equation 1 with this formula, you can easily say value of P is equals to 40, this coefficient. Value of Q is the constant term at the RHS, which is 20. So, Q is equals to 20. The solution is given by this equation. So, directly I will be putting the values. Therefore, I of t is equals to, I am referring this equation, e raised to minus pt, p is 40. So e raised to minus 40 into t inside the integration, q, value of q is 20, 20 e raised to plus pt, that is e raised to, this is 20 e raised to plus 40 t dt, I am referring this term, plus c1, c1 is the constant that we need supposed to calculate. So I am keeping C1 as it is. C1 e raised to minus pt that is e raised to minus 40t. This is the equation which I have written as the solution of equation number 1. Now let us solve this integration. So it can be simply written as e raised to minus 40t. I have kept it as it is. I need to calculate integration of this term. This 20 is constant. So it can be taken out. I will write it over here 20 integration of e raised to 40 x make use of the simple formula if you are integrating e raised to a x dx answer is e raised to a x upon a this is the uh, formula to calculate the integration same way only notations are different i have taken 20 outside integration of 40, e raised to 40 t is e raised to 40 t divided by 40 4 0 except t skip t and write down the coefficient in the denominator. So this is the integration of this term, first term plus C1, second term I am keeping it as it is, minus 4, 0, t. Limits of integrations are 0 to t. So in place of t, in place of this t, I need to put the lower limit and after limit, uh, lower limit and upper limit. Now this term can be written as, this 20 I am taking outside, 20 e raised to minus 4, 0, t inside the bracket and if I will keep upper limit it remains same e raised to 4 0 t minus lower limit is 0 so e raised to 40 into 0 that is e raised to 0 divided by 4 0 as it is plus c1 e raised to minus 4 0 t 
Now let us rearrange the terms. Do remember one mathematical identity e raised to zero is always one. So this term is one. This forty can be taken out. So this equation can be written as twenty upon forty. That is one by two e raised to minus four zero t inside the bracket e raised to four zero t minus one. Value of e raised to zero is one. I have taken this forty outside, so I have written one by two plus C one e raised to minus four zero t. Say equation number two. Now what I need to do? I'm supposed to calculate the value of C one. To calculate the value of C one, we'll use some initial conditions. So to calculate value of C one, I'll be using condition at t is equal to zero. This calculation we did it in step number one. At t is equal to zero. We have value that is i of t, which we denoted it as i zero. That is the initial current, and this value was 0.6. This we have already calculated. So put t is equal to zero in equation two. If you put t is equal to zero, then this is the basic equation of i of t, which is equation number two. At t is equal to zero, i of t is i zero, which is 0.6. So at the LHS, I will write 0.6 in place of i of t is equal to One half as it is. I am putting t is equal to zero, so it becomes e raised to zero. So I will write e raised to zero in the bracket e raised to zero minus one plus c one e raised to zero. Now very simple logic. E raised to zero is always one, so this term becomes one minus one. That is zero. Zero into anything is zero, so this term gets cancelled. Therefore, I can write point six is equal to c one. E raised to zero is one, so it is C one. This is the value of constant of integration. Now, last step. Once I I get the value of C one, simply I need to put the value of C one in equation two. So final answer can be written as I of t is equal to one half e raised to minus four zero t in the bracket e raised to four zero t minus one. Plus value of C one. Here I need to put the value of C one. It is point six e raised to minus forty t. This is the ampere. This is the equation of current. So its unit is written as ampere. This is the answer of this numerical. So we'll solve one more numerical so that this concept will be more clear to you. The next numerical is. In the following network, calculate current I of t. Now, this is somewhat different numerical. Nothing is mentioned whether whether steady state is obtained or not. As well as switch is not shown. But by default, uh, as far as these numericals of initial conditions are mentioned, it is assumed that switch is closed at t is equal to zero. That means to calculate initial condition, we have to consider that switch is closed at t is equal to zero, even though it is not shown in the diagram. And at t is equal to zero plus capacitor acts as short circuit. So in place of capacitor, at t is equal to zero. Step one is as usual. We need to calculate the initial current. So at t is equal to zero, this capacitor acts as short circuit. So I will draw a simple line, and this particular current is denoted by I zero. That is initial current. So very simple. Only one voltage source is there, and one resistance is there. So we have the Ohm's law, I is equal to V by R. In this case, I will write I zero is equal to available voltage is five divided by resistance that is one k. It is one kilo ohm. So it is five upon one thousand ohm. So this current is five milli ampere or five into ten raised to minus three. This is the initial current. For step two, we need to consider given circuit as it is without thinking of the switch. We just now calculated the value of I zero initial current five milli amperes in step one. Given value of capacitance is ten nanofarad, which is ten into ten raised to minus nine farad. This is one k, which is one thousand ohm. Now available voltage is five volt. This voltage will get dropped across resistance and across capacitor. To calculate voltage drop across capacitor, we have the formula. V C is one by C integration I D T. So as I said, this five volt is getting divided across one kilo ohm and across this capacitor. So I will simply write five is equals to voltage drop across resistor is given by V is equals to I into R. 
so i is i of t r is 1k that is 1000 into i of t plus voltage drop across capacitor so it is 1 by c so 1 by c means value of capacitance 10 into 10 raised to minus 9 integration i of t in this case current i is i of t i of t dt to remove the integration sign we will differentiate both sides so if you differentiate both sides the derivative of 5 become 0 as it is constant this 1000 remains as it is derivative of i of t is written as d by dt of i of t plus this 1 upon 10 into 10 raised to minus 9 remains as it is if we differentiate it integration gets cancelled so simply it becomes i of t now we have to make use of standard formula to make use of standard formula the coefficient of d by dt term must be made equals to 1 so i will divide both sides by 1000 so first i will write this term at the lhs if we will divide it by 1000 equation becomes t by dt of i of t plus 10 raised to 5 i of t is equals to 0 this i got after dividing the equation by 1000 see it is equation number 1 to solve such equations what's the difference between this equation and the equation which we uh, obtained in the earlier sum there was some constant value in the earlier case here it is zero so if it is zero we have to make use of this formula a0 di t by dt plus a1 i of t is equals to zero if this is the equation then its solution is given by this formula c1 is the constant that we need to calculate so using this standard formula i can write its solution directly as i of t is equals to c1 e raised to now to apply this formula i should calculate this value of a1 and a0 this is the format a0 is coefficient with di by dt with di by dt the thing is there that means value of a0 is 1 a1 is coefficient with i of t with i of t we have 10 raised to 5 so value of a1 is 10 raised to 5 so simply i will put the values it is c1 c1 that i need to calculate so i am keeping c1 as it is e raised to minus a1 upon a0 let us put the values minus 10 raised to 5 upon 1 so you can just keep it as it is into t this is the solution so simply i will delete this one term so it becomes e raised to minus 10 raised to 5 t say equation number 2 like the previous sum i need to calculate the value of c1 to calculate value of c1 use initial conditions how do you use it you will be writing it like this at t is equals to 0 i of t is denoted by i0 which is equals to 5 milli ampere that is 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 so put t is equals to 0 in equation 2 if you put t is equals to 0 in equation 2 value of i of 2 becomes 5 milli ampere so it is 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 is equals to c1 e raised to 0 because i am putting t is equals to 0 e raised to 0 is 1 so i am neglecting this term so this is the value of c1 last step simply we need to put the value of c1 in this equation so final answer is i of t is 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 into e raised to minus 10 raised to 5 t this is the final answer since it is the answer of current its equation or uh, its notation is amperes so this is the final answer dear students these are uh, uh, some uh, two different types of variations as far as the transient response numericals are concerned so if you have liked this video don't forget to smash the like button so that's it for today's session thank you for attending this session thank you very much